So this is another space effect I've been trying to nail for a while now. Christopher Nolan's Interstellar had one effect which seemed to capture the internet's imagination back in 2014. The double negative team famously worked with physicist Kip Thorne to create the iconic look and even published a scientific paper on their work. For me, the movie's black hole was an iconic look that meant when you see it, you know exactly what it is. As much as I love the Thor movies, it took me several viewings to realise the star in Thor 2 The Dark World was actually meant to be a black hole. That accretion disc makes all the difference. A while ago I made a really quick tutorial on using Cinema 4D to create a black hole. But when you're limited to C4D light and have no particles, that option isn't that helpful. I'm not going to spend much time on making the particles in this tutorial. I'll include the final project file, which uses Particular 3, but it is possible to adapt my earlier Creative Cow tutorial, CC Particle Galaxy. Instead, this tutorial is going to focus on how I solved the halo warp element. It does use mathematics, but don't let that intimidate you. OK, so here we have a composition. I've set it to HD, 1920x1080, 25 frames per second and I'm going to create a new layer. So go to layer, new solid, and set it to 1000 by 1000 pixels and set the color to be yellowish. This is going to be our accretion disk proxy. Let's click on it and name it disk. Next, let's add a circular mask. I'll do this by switching the mask tool to ellipse and then double clicking on it. Now I want this to be a donut, so I'm going to select the mask and choose edit, duplicate. Set the new mask to subtract and twirl down the settings and let's reduce the expansion quite a bit. Minus 250 is a nice round number. Okay, so next I'll make this a 3D layer and rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis. Now I'll add a camera and using the unified camera tool I'll move around so I can see my disk layer again. Okay, now time to figure out that warp. I played around with lots of effects options and found that Bulge, one of AE's oldest effects, did the job really well. This is how I did it. I'm going to create an adjustment layer. Make sure it's above the disk layer and name it Bulge. Now let's make this adjustment layer a 3D layer too and add the Bulge effect. Let's add an auto orient to the layer so it always points towards the camera. Go to Layer, Transform, Auto Orient and choose Orient Towards Camera and click OK. Then let's increase the bulge radius. In fact, let's use the pick whip to link the vertical radius to the horizontal so we always have a circle. And increasing the horizontal radius until it just touches the inside edge of the disc. Now let's increase the bulge height to maximum. OK, so we're beginning to get a look. We can do better though. See, the problem is bulge is a 2D effect. It makes no difference that the adjustment layer is 3D. When I move the camera closer, the bulge stays the same. Also, if I move the camera so it's not pointing at the center, the bulge effect stays in the middle. There are two separate problems here, and there are two separate solutions. First, the easy one, moving it off center. Let's create a null object, make it 3D, and call it black hole null. And let's parent both layers to this null. Now open up the effects options for the bulge effect and alt click on the bulge center and type the following L equals this comp dot layer brackets quotes black hole null quotes brackets semicolon L dot two comp brackets square brackets zero comma zero square brackets regular brackets semicolon or you could just copy the code. This converts the 3D position of the null object into 2D coordinates. So now when I move the camera from side to side, the bulge moves with it. One problem solved, now problem number two. This is the maths bit. Here's the thing. Objects that are far away appear smaller. I know, mind-boggling. And in the case of a 2D effect, if I adjust the radius of the bulge effect to be smaller the further back the camera is, we can say that the bulge radius is inversely proportional to the distance of the camera. Here's the mathematics. D is camera distance inversely proportional to R, the bulge radius. And I can convert this into an expression using a constant, K. Moving things around, 
r is equal to k divided by the camera distance. So how do we find k? Let's set the camera back to a center line on the x and y axes, so we only have to worry about the z axis. I'm going to have to adjust the y value a little so we can see what's going on. And let's keep this simple with round numbers and set z to equal 1000. If I hit P on the black hole null object, I can see that Z is in position zero. So now we're a thousand pixels away from the center. Let's adjust the bulge radius until we're happy with it and make note of the value. So at a thousand pixels distance, we need a radius of 480 pixels. Now, let's back the camera up to 2,500 pixels and adjust the bulge radius down to about 180. Okay, so now we have one set of measurements for the calculation and we have a second set to verify. Let's adjust the formula. So we get K is equal to R times D. Let's plug in the numbers and we see that K is 1000 times 480. K is equal to 480,000. To test this, let's see if our second set of measurements matches up. K divided by D, so 480,000 divided by 2500 is equal to 192. So it's not exact, it's not exactly 180. But I think this is close enough when we turn it into an expression. But we'll also need another expression to calculate the distance between the camera and the center of our black hole. We'll have to nest that in. Alt click on the horizontal radius and type 480,000, divide, and then let's use the preset options and go to vector math length 0.1.2. Don't click off the expression. Highlight 0.1 and use the pick whip to select our camera's position. And do the same for 0.2 and the black hole null position. And that's it. Now you can click off and when you move the camera back and forth the bulge effect behaves like it's in 3D. The only remaining problem is that we don't see a non-distorting leading edge for our disk. No problem. Duplicate the disk layer using Ctrl D and then move it above the adjustment layer. Now we need to hide that back edge. So double click on that second layer and draw a rectangular mask over the bottom half and set it to subtract. Close the layer window and you'll need to adjust it with feathering. And that's it, that's the trick. Once I got this, everything else was aesthetic. I did add an expression to the taper value that gave me a difference in tapering based on distance, and of course I replace the disks with particles. But I've included a project file so you can see all the extra stuff I added. I have saved up and bought trap code particular, which makes this easier as you can include an obscuration layer on the leading edge disk. If you're using particle playground, you'll need to draw your leading edge disk to only be a semicircle, but the rest will be the same. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much for watching, and thank you as well to Dean Egg and Dr. Thorne, and of course Christopher Nolan. I can stop obsessing about this now.